better. That's the series title. And the course itself is called Jesus the Miracle Worker. And uh, we have so far done, uh, in this Understanding Your Bible series, we've done three other modules, if you will. The first module was just intended to expose people to the Bible, to, to show you how the Bible is kind of broken up, to show you that it is one consistent story, really from start to finish. It's all about God's intervention in, in humankind. It's God first establishing this world, God building the world for mankind, God making Adam and placing him in the Garden of Eden with Eve, and then the fall of sin, the fall of man through sin, and, and the salvation story, basically is how the Bible then fleshes itself out. And what the Bible presents is not just the historic truths, but the Bible also presents instructions for living. And not just instructions for living, but the Bible gives us the therefore. Because God has made us, because God loves us, because God has saved us, because Satan is in the world, therefore, here are the things that are going to happen in some cases on a day-to-day -day basis. Here are the challenges that you're going to have. Here are the struggles that you might face. Here are the blessings that come along with all of those challenges and, and struggles. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then we moved on to talking about Jesus uh, himself, as Jesus being the center of the Bible. We moved on to talk about Jesus as he's presented in Scripture as the Messiah of the Old Testament. We talked about what that, what that meant and what that looked like. And we even went into how they probably missed him when he came to his own. And the Bible says they received him not. And then we moved on to Jesus the teacher. And we looked at the Sermon on the Mount. And we looked at some of his, his strategies in teaching, some of the techniques that he used, why he taught in parables. Now we're going to look at the miracles. We're going to look at some of the things that, that Jesus did and why he did them. Amen? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments so far? Okay, so this is, here are our course objectives. At the conclusion of this course, my prayer is that you will, one, be able to discuss the various instances of miracles in Scripture. Not that you have to name them by rote but that you will be able to talk pretty confidently about some of the miracles that, that Jesus wrought, okay? Two, that you would be able to discuss them in their context. And when we get to a, a, a slide that's coming up, I'll talk more about what that means. I personally have a view about how you ought to go about studying scripture. And, and I'm gonna share that with you. And if you can, I hate to say master because none of us masters on this side, amen? But if you can kind of get in the habit of, of doing what I'm going to suggest, then by the end of this course, you will be able to teach me. Mm. We're going to do this differently than what we've done in the past. Normally, I stand up here and I tell the story and I kind of try to open it up for you. We'll do some of that. But what I want to do is give you the keys. And, and, and hopefully, you will then be able to talk each other and talk me through the miracles. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Finally, we want you to be able to discuss Jesus' general theology and its application relative to the miracles. What is Jesus saying in doing this miracle? Theology is a fancy word that just means the study of God and the things of God. It's what you think about God, what you believe about God, what you read about God. Amen? So we have to understand that Jesus did these things not just to be a show-off, but Jesus worked these miracles with a purpose in mind. And that purpose had to be consistent with the mission that, that he came into the world with. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, can we, can we move? Okay, here's our course outline. Tonight, we're going to go through Thursday, December 16th. We're going to go every Thursday between now and then, except obviously Thanksgiving. We will not meet Thanksgiving because I'll be watching the Dallas Cowboys and I'll have a, a plate of food. So we won't meet that night, but tonight we're going to look at the storm on the sea, Jesus calming the storm. Uh, next week we're going to look at exorcisms, the storm on the shore. Following week, walking on water, followed by fishes and feedings, Jesus healing various physical ailment, ailments, uh, healing blindness, healing physical paralysis on November 11th. Healing Leprosy on November 18th, and then we're going to skip Thanksgiving, December 2nd, 
Resurrection, the widow of Nain's son. Resurrection, Lazarus on the ninth. And finally, we're going to come back to the Immaculate Conception on December 16th, because that's heading into our Christmas. And so we want to look at the miracle of Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. God with us and how he came to be with us. Um, you may have noticed as we kind of went through that, that course schedule, that there's four categories of healings that we're really going to look at, except with the exception being the Immaculate Conception, which I guess falls under the first heading. But there's four basic headings that we're going to look at. We're going to look at, at miracles of nature. We're going to look at cures, instances where Jesus cured someone. We're going to look at, or healing, we're going to look at exorcism and resurrection. We're going to look at Jesus' power over the dead. And, I, and I've said this before, Jesus never attended a funeral that he didn't stop. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, if you really think about it, Jairus' daughter, Lazarus, his own, the widow of Nain's son, Jesus never attended a funeral in a real sense that he didn't break up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's move on. The Bible, witnesses to the miracle work. As we get into this slide, I want to refer to your outline, and I, and I want to just get some basic understanding of what we're talking about when we're talking about a miracle. Miracle defined, number one, a miracle is an unexpected event that is attributed to, here are your first two blanks on your outline, God's intervention. So a miracle is something unusual and unexpected that it is generally cons considered happened as a result of God's intervention. Sometimes the event is attributed also to the miracle worker himself, right? We realize Jesus walked on water, right? We also realize Peter walked on water, right? Jesus was able to walk on water because he's God. Peter was able to walk on water because Jesus is God. Does that make sense? So it's the miracle and the miracle worker. It's, it's either way, they're wrapped up in God's identity, and that's what we want to get into. A miracle is sometimes thought of as a perceptible suspension of the laws of nature. When we talk about laws of nature, what kinds of things are we talking about? What are some laws of nature? Gravity is a great example. What goes up, what? And, and in a real sense... When we talk about God suspending the law of nature, the laws of nature, gravity is a great place to start. Because our Bible tells us that Jesus ascended into heaven. Right? Jesus physically ascended into heaven in Acts chapter 1. Right? Mm -hmm. The law of gravity says what goes up most, must come down. Right? Mm -hmm. The law of gravity has been suspended, but is Jesus returning? Amen. Yes, he is. We, we, we look forward to it with bated breath. Jesus is returning. But, so there is a, there's a suspension of gravity in that sense that is centuries in progress. But it doesn't do away with the law of gravity. It doesn't eradicate the law of gravity. Does that make sense? Yes. Jesus had the ability to, if you think about his resurrected body, and I don't want to get way ahead, but if you think about the resurrection account that he was able to pass through a wall and yet sit down and eat fish. You know, again, the suspension of physics, the suspension of the laws of matter so that he could, again, make a point. Nothing that he did was to show off. It was always to communicate a truth about himself or about God. Amen? Amen. 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 A miracle described is this. A miracle sometimes by the world is described as something other than a miracle. Or it is minimized in its import by the fact that the world sometimes just throws the word miracle around. What are some miracles that you hear talked about on television, for example? Any sports fans? <laughs> the Immaculate Reception, right? Yeah. Franco Harris catches a deflected pass in the NFL playoffs in the 70s, and that starts the string of Super Bowl victories for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and, and they're screaming, it's a miracle. You know, one of the most famous sports references is, is Al Michaels' call of the 1980 Olympic hockey team when they